Well, here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Renault Quid in flesh, finally on Indian roads. Now, when this car was unveiled earlier this year in May by Renault Nissan boss Carlos Cohn, it kind of signified the importance of the Indian market for Renault. A lot of claims were also made about this car being a game changer in India's competitive low-cost hatchback segment. Well, on paper, it certainly looks quite impressive. But is it really as impressive on the road? Well, you and me are about to find out. The Quid is part of Renault's CMF strategy, that is a compact module family. It comes under the CMF A classification, the A representing the subcompact segment. This modular platform brings about a huge cost saving to the manufacturer as well as the consumer, undoubtedly the need of the art. The Quid has a stance which is second to none in this segment. The front end especially looks like there has been a significant amount of effort and thought put into the design. The unique grille with the chain linkages or dumbbells or whatever it looks like to you. The bold headlights, even the bumper design seems like it has been well thought out. Now it's a good thing that Renault aren't calling this an SUV or a crossover because that would be preposterous but there are quite a few design cues that look like they've been inspired by SUVs. Look at the surface contours and the surface curvature, the, the flared hip and the shoulder. You can also see the squarish wheel wells that kind of make the puny 13-inch tyres look a little out of place. I wish they were, they were bigger tyres just uh, for the purpose of aesthetics. But something we have to talk about is the ground clearance. 180 mm. Now let me give you some perspective. Not only is it class leading, better than most hatchbacks, probably all of them, better than most sedans, but even more than cars like the Toyota Innova. The rear end is the one that is most reminiscent of the fact that this is essentially a hatchback. It is the most austere and unfussy angle of the Quid with no pretensions of being an SUV. It is almost like the quid in your rear view mirror and the one in front of you are two different cars. The quid is taller, longer, wider and sits higher than competition and yet it manages to snugly fit in the subcompact segment. And these dimensions translate into a lot of space on the insides as well, enough to surprise you further amongst other surprises. The Quid borrows the infotainment system from the Duster and the Logi which means you get the benefits of a touchscreen unit with Bluetooth connectivity and even navigation. Now this is something which is definitely likely to draw a lot of interest. The dashboard is simplistic, non-cluttered and therefore optimizing space over all else. And space is the ultimate luxury in this segment. The instrument binacle is digital and while being extremely youthful and great to look at, doesn't display a whole lot of information at once. Quality overall is reasonable for the class, don't go expecting it to take you aback and you won't be disappointed. <music> Renault has built an all new engine for the Quid from ground up. The 799cc motor from the BR family of Renault engines makes about 54 PS of max power and 74 Nm of max torque. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but it is more than what the Alto's 800cc engine makes. The use of an aluminium block and plastics in components like the oil sump and intake manifold have helped Renault reduce the engine's weight considerably. Now I know what you're thinking, 54 PS, 74 Newton meters isn't all that much power or torque. And it isn't, I'm not going to lie to you, but it's not going to surprise you when you drive this car because it will feel a little underpowered. Well, a lot underpowered actually, especially if you're driving up an incline or you have four people sitting in the car. But what will surprise you is the levels of refinement that they've managed to achieve with a three-cylinder engine. So if you're standing outside, there is that trademark clatter of a three-cylinder. But once you're inside, it feels like a four-cylinder. It's smooth, there are fewer vibrations, and that is a really good job that they've done with the NVH levels. Now everything on the drivetrain is inclined towards efficiency. So while it might not be a lot of fun to drive, what they've managed to achieve is this, ladies and gentlemen, is the most fuel efficient petrol car in the country and it's not even turbocharged. Don't expect the Quid to come with a larger, more powerful engine in the future, but Renault could bring in the automated manual transmission option. The new Quid weighs in at just 660 kilograms, making it lighter than its competition by a good 60 kgs, as well as making it the lightest car in its segment which should give it a significant advantage in terms of dynamics. Well, does it? Now, there are a few downsides to having a high ground clearance. 
uh, tall suspension, a high seat, is that you're also increasing your center of gravity, which essentially means that when you throw this car into corners, it will have a tendency to roll. And it's not really helped by those tiny 13-inch wheels. The quid, of course, has a power steering system as expected, which is quite eager in taking away the steering effort involved. Now, I know most of you are not going to mind that heavy assistance because when you're driving in the city and in traffic, it's actually quite kind of a boon because it's so easy to handle and maneuver about. But it's when you hit the highways on higher speeds is when you want a little bit more weight on the steering wheel, which it won't have. Now, I'm okay with a light steering setup as long as it doesn't unsettle the car or it doesn't make you feel uncomfortable at higher speeds. And that doesn't seem to happen, at least at the speeds that this car is capable of. The fact that the quid weighs as little raises a few questions about safety, but Renault claims that it meets all the required Indian norms. Now, there's so much emphasis on things like fuel efficiency and being first in segment in so many details and the value for money proposition. But I just wish that Renault would have emphasized a little bit more on the safety front. Now, this car doesn't have ABS or any of the electronics. Understandably, it's a low-cost car, but it doesn't even have standard airbags. Only the driver's side airbag is an option on the top end variant. The passenger doesn't even have an option. I just feel that that is one area where Renault could have made a slightly different statement. But let's not kid ourselves. I mean, there are still a few areas of concern in terms of build quality and even ergonomics, and it just won't match up to cars from higher segments. Having said that, within this segment, this car is certainly quite a way forward. Now, the Quid is certainly an extremely brave move for Renault in India. Now, this is a segment you have to understand. It can be quite rewarding when you get it right, but it can also be very punishing if you get it wrong, as some manufacturers have found out in the past. The Quid checks all the right boxes. It's got an attractive design. It's got a lot of segment-first features. And then there's a tall promise made by Renault that they will make it extremely affordable. And I'm not just talking about the extra room price, but also the cost of ownership. Now, Renault reckons that with the localization that they've achieved of 98%, they are going to take the fight right to the likes of Maruti and Hyundai. Now, when all of this comes together, things are looking rather bright for Renault and the Quid in India. It's going to give other manufacturers something to think about. And for you, what it's going to do for you is it's going to surprise you. And it's going to surprise you rather pleasantly.